Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And a very good day My name is Abdul Halim bin Hashim My supervisor is Dr. Guna Sundari Raju Today in this video I'll be presenting my PhD research proposal Entitled Developing a Taxonomy of Permit to Work System The Permit to Work or PTW or permit system is a documented procedure that authorizes certain people to carry out specific work within a specified time frame. It sets out the precautions required to complete work safely based on a risk assessment. This is the definition given by the Health and Safety Executive. Permit to work systems is a popular safety management tool, especially in high risk industry. We can find these systems being implemented in oil and gas industries, petrochemical plant, chemical plant, in manufacturing. This system is used to communicate simultaneous operations, whereby this operation can have interaction or affecting one another and to communicate hazard and risk control information to the people who will be doing the job and also to other to other people who is operating within the adjacent area uh, so that subsequent action can be taken to avoid unwanted incidents or accidents PTW is implemented using various approach and is considered as having high customization depending on the nature of the organization. Usually the bigger the organization, the more various operation that it has within the premise, the more custom, the more bigger, the more complex the PTW system will be. However, there is a lack of information available within the literature that describe the extent of the customization, especially in Malaysia. So the problem statement for my research would be the operation of permit to work system is known to be highly customized, but there is a lack of research on the extent of its customization or differences, especially in Malaysia. So I have three research questions. The first one is, how does a permit to work systems implemented within its real world context? The second research question, what is the key parameters that differentiates permit to work systems? And the third research question, how can we differentiate permit to work systems? So the research objectives are number one, to investigate the actual workings of permit to work system in Malaysian industries. Number two, to observe and measure key parameters of permit to work systems practiced in different industries in Malaysia. Number three, to develop a scheme of classification in the sense a taxonomy of permit to work systems using key parameters. This research I consider as significance because number one, it can close the gap between theory and practices. Number two, it can provide opportunities for improvement and these opportunities can be used to reduce the risk of error or incidents, especially in the implementation of permit to work systems within organization in Malaysia. And we can extend the boundary of knowledge, particularly on the development of the taxonomy that would identify characteristic or traits that help differentiate permit to work systems in organization. 
an increased fundamental understanding of its existence be used as a language for communication and to proliferate related research. However, I foresee there will be some limitation related to my research. Number one, the limitations of self-reported data because I'm using interview. I will be relying on information that could not or difficult to be independently verified. And some of the informants, or might be all, may suffer from selective memory. They may remi remember something or, and forget about something. Telescoping and attribution bias. Data collection instrument is the researcher himself and I could suffer from potential bias or error which includes confirmation bias, question order bias, leading questions or wording bias, omission of important questions during interview, in which I might forget to ask or I didn't think of it. Or maybe it's in the line of inquiry and I suddenly decided that I want to omit it. And there is a possibility of not being able to reach the point of saturation due to time constraints, compounded by delay in acquiring permission to access informants and documents. And that delay might be in weeks, in months, or hopefully not in years. Refusal of informant to participate in interview after prior permission. They have given the permission and then suddenly they back off. Causing repetition of cycle as above mentioned. So I need to acquire another permission from another organization and to wait for them to respond. This is my conceptual framework. As you can see, that it is an organization okay, within a, a boundary. Of course, there is a lot of boundaries in the organization and one of the focus is the permit to work systems. Within this permit to, to work systems, there are key players, key role players. marked by the different colors. Number one is the permit applicant. Permit applicant can be the person in charge of the assets or area that needs to be worked on. And usually within the organization premise, they would have multiple operation or simultaneous operation that might affect one another. And then there is the permit authorizer or permit issuer. This usually is the area authority, the one who's in charge of the whole operation or the whole area. And the next would be the permit coordinator. The permit coordinator is the person who oversees and manages the permit to work system to ensure that it is run accordingly. And there will be the work approver or work checker, the one in the green box, that will have to check whatever requirements within the permit form to be in order as specified in the permit prior to the commencement of work and there is the work executor work executioner it's either can be the staff of the organization or it can be an external parties the contractor 
that is given the authority to come into the premise, the organization premise, and do the specified work in the permit. And all of these people will interact with each other in such ways as discussion, discussing, sharing information, making decision, passing the information from one another in the form of document or certificates and doing work as required by each other. So this is the boundary of my research. Next will be the methodology. I will be using a multiple case study approach. And the unit of analysis will be the organizations that implements permit to work system in Malaysia. And for me to be able to draw a comparison, it is very important that these organizations are selected from different industries and sizes. Organization to be selected should come from, I'm proposing three types, uh, petrochemical or chemical utilities and manufacturing. And in each industry, there will be one large size organization and one medium organization. To differentiate between large and medium organization, I will refer to the small and medium industry cooperation in Malaysia for the definition. For the sampling method, I will be using expert sampling. At a minimum, five expert samples will be selected for interview at each of the six organizations. These five samples make up a group of people that play important roles in the permit to work system, as I mentioned previously in my conceptual framework. It forms the concrete boundary ideal for the usage of a case study. The expert samples must have working experience in roles specific to permit to work systems. Also, I already mentioned in the, my conceptual framework. They are the permit issuer, the permit coordinator, the permit applicant, the work executioner, and the work approver. And they must hold the roles for at least minimum of six months in any capacity. And they would be employed in the organization for a minimum of six months. And a number of of the above role might may vary between organization some organization might have five roles key roles and maybe in the medium organization they might have less than five four or maybe three at a minimum for the process of data collection these are some of the activities that i plan to do number one uh, to prepare resources for field work uh, such as preparing for the camcorder or voice recorder or tablets and other equipments. Prepare a series of open-ended questions. That will be my line of inquiry for the informants. Each sample will be invited for interviews using email or private messages whereby the number will be given to me by the organization with permission. Only those who agree to participate in interview will be called. And then the interview will be conducted either using online, online conference call, if there is a need for it, especially in the climate of MCO and COVID-19, or phone calls. And if the situation permits, face to face. The interview will be conducted in a language understood by all parties involved in the process. The voice response will be recorded using the native ability of the communication tools used for the interview. If the interview is done face to face, I will be using I will use a recording instrument 
it can be a digital recorder or a camcorder and then the response will be will then be transcribed using appropriate digital apps or manually all evidences will be stored in a cloud drive as my primary storage and a copy will be in the physical hard drive as backup for emergency if situation permits and permission is given i will also attempt to visually observe the practices at the selected organization and take necessary measurement by counting activities or counting documents to take photos or other physical samples to further substantiate all or any of the samples claim or if there is any additional data not disclosed by the sample and all of these physical evidences will be tagged and stored in safekeeping and using lock and key for validity and reliability prior to conducting the actual research i will be doing a pilot case study i will choose one organization that is convenient and then i will execute the protocol as specified in this proposal and during that process i will test the effectiveness of the protocol and then i will gather feedback maybe from the informants or from the organization and reflect for further improvement to increase the construct validity i will be using three tactics number 1 the use of multiple sources of evidence and i will establish a chain of evidence and then to have the draft case study report reviewed by the informants to increase the reliability of the study a case study database will be developed for data analysis i will prepare and organize data that include such activities as transform audio data into digital transcription and physical data into digital format if i receive a physical evidence identifying file system as the case database and then organize sort data into case database later on i will be reading it and making sense of the data by doing such activities as scanning the database to build a sense of the data as a whole immerse myself into the details write and organize memos or notes while watching for emerging patterns either similar or contrasting or insights synthesizing data for analytic generalization and then i will build detailed description of each case putting gathered information into arrays reflecting themes and sub themes if there is any making a matrix of contrasting categories and placing evidence within the matrix creating visual displays might be either using flow charts or diagrams or other visual means tabulating the frequency of different events within the boundaries of the permit to work system putting information in chronological order and temporal dim dimension and lastly to develop the appropriate taxonomy finally i will prepare a case study report whereby single case studies presented as separate chap chapters an additional chapter dedicated to cross case analysis and result draft case study report reviewed by informants to increase reliability as mentioned before upon confirmation by the informants an additional chapter will be added to present the proposed taxonomy And finally for the ethical consideration there are a few things that I need to consider number 1 gaining permission for USM from USM's ethics board gaining informed consent from the organization and the participant of the interview protecting the informants from any harm including avoiding the use of any deception protecting the privacy and confidentiality of all informants selecting participants equitably and lastly disclosure of comprehensive findings 
that would be all that would be all for me today thank you very much and have a blessed day bye bye